Thank you very much, uh, Les Cangola. Um, in, in the recent days, uh, I see, uh, Minister, that uh, Bertie Herden had a meeting, a secret meeting with Simon Harris, and it's little wonder that um, he taught him one thing about leaks and spins. That was usually coming out of Fianna Fáil. Now it's starting to come out of Fine Gael. It's like a bucket with no ass in it. Uh, the, 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 the leaks that have uh, been going on the last uh, couple of weeks in relation to a budget. One time a budget uh, took place in a country and nobody knew until the budget day exactly what was going to happen. Everybody knew what was going to happen prior to this. But what people, one thing they didn't know is the hospitality sector are absolutely furious and they're sending me messages. They're sending messages out throughout the country the way they've been let down by this government. It was an appalling an appalling uh, uh, travesty that the, the VAT rate that this government put up from 9% from to 13.5% has not been decreased, uh, in spite of promises. The VAT 9 group were up here uh, last week, and I presume they were brought up here on a lick and a promise uh, that this was going to happen. Uh, now, of course, Fine Gael are saying that they wanted it to happen in Fianna Fáil, and the Greens didn't want it to happen, but of course this is finger-pointing, and that's what happens when you're coming close to election. But what, what does matter is there's 270,000 jobs put in jeopardy, many of these put in jeopardy. There's already over 600 cafes and restaurants after closing over the last few months. And they are in a desperate, desperate situation. And, and, and you know, the, 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 the lower wage being increased is, 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 is always to be welcome, but that's another increase for those businesses that have to do payouts, and they can't afford. And Fault Ireland will spend millions promoting this beautiful country over the next uh, few months. But what tourists will see when they come in here is empty commercial buildings for sale or lease, because people are closing the door. They can't afford to stay in business. And I uh, obviously have limited time here, and I, I, I'd like to spend my seven and a half minutes speaking on behalf of those people, because I've met with them, and Deputy McGrath has just mentioned it there, we've all met with them. I met with the, uh, Peter and Elaine, the fish basket, Ross Carby, Jim Edwards and Kinsale, Town also, Dees and Skull. All these businesses are in desperate, in a desperate position, and pleaded with this government to understand that, and they didn't understand it, and they turned their back in a time when they said they were awash with money, and they've left them down. Shockingly, I don't think anyone that's running those businesses or employees, should, they should answer the door when these people come knocking on it for votes, and that won't be forgotten. We're in a, a situation where this budget robbed Peter and paid Paul. It has fuel increases. It says, yes, we give uh, extra pension to the elderly. I, I fully uh, support that. We uh, dropped the US, the US each but remember, uh, Fine Gael uh, promised to drop that altogether. There's only just a decrease in the uh, payment going forward. So that was a false promise that has been delivered, should never have been brought in the first place. But then you turn around and give a fuel increase. So you're robbing, him, uh, robbing Peter and paying Paul. That fuel increase is going to hurt everybody that pulls up at the filling station. 2.5 uh, cents for diesel, 2.1 pence for petrol in a litre. They can't afford that. Families can't afford it. So this budget is going to hit hard the working men and working women as usual. They're going to be penalised. The people have to go to work in the morning, have to take the kids to school, have to use a vehicle to get from A to B. And you know that's easy catch. So the home heating is going up. The bag of coal is going up. Um, and, and, and absolutely no sympathy whatsoever for those people who are going to cut, be caught in that trap to have little other choice. You're saying some of this carbon tax, which is only a, a farce for the Green Party to keep happy, is going to be, oh, it's going to help in the warmer homes. We all know. Every one of us politicians here, except you're in denial, will know it takes two years. It took two years when the Green Party came into government to get your house warmer home. It's still taking two years. Makes no odds. Not any faster, not any different. Agriculture, uh, what I could gather from agriculture is there's a lot of talks about schemes, but that's continuation of what's already there. And we look into it, in one of the schemes it says it will look into measures for next year's budget. What's wrong with this year's budget in relation to agriculture? Why couldn't this year's budget be, be uh, looked into? In relation to the uh, RZLT, uh, Fianna Fáil and the Green Party decided, and Fine Gael decided to pursue the residential zone land tax. It's here to stay. And despite pressure from farmers heaped on coalition party TDs and centres. The surprise today from Minister for Finance, Jack Chambers TD, is that the residential zone land tax is here to stay and that the only compromise is that farmers will be given an exemption in 2025 if they seek to rezone their land. In effect, this means downsizing from available residential zoning to agricultural zoning. Fianna Fáil have caved in here, yet again, and tax-hungry anti-greens have put another nail in the farming uh, coffin, but they don't care. And I, I, to be quite honest with you, I don't think I heard any minister speaking here about fisheries today. It's astonishing, astonishing that we're surrounded by water and nobody, Jack, I mean the two main ministers, never spoke about fisheries. What is are there for the pelagic fishermen? What is are there uh, for the inshore fishermen that are experiencing serious difficulties this present time? You have turned your back on them, and I have continuously said if they don't be a standalone minister for marine, minister for fisheries, minister for islands, 
They are forgotten and they are forgotten people. Carers, he says he, rex, he, he put extra money into the carers' pockets. I, I respect that if you have. But we are strong and adamant there should be no carers' means test. Absolutely no carers' means test. If you look after a person in your home, or if you look after your neighbour, or if you look at, why are you means tested? Like, are, we are in a position today that there is no hospital beds available for elderly people if they need to stay long term in hospitals. So, what do we do? We then make sure to penalise those who try and care for them instead of supporting those who care for them. We're told we can't have home helps for all sorts of strange type of reasons out there, even though we're told there's plenty of hours available and plenty of funding. It's not happening on the ground. So, the carers is another issue. And I'm talking about health. Is there going to be extra funding, Minister? You might be able to confirm that in relation to beds for elderly. It's a crisis situation in West Cork. A crisis situation in West Cork, where they are now inside medical wards and cannot find a long term nursing home or a long term community hospital bed. I am, we know the hospital beds in, in West Cork, just less beds they have instead of more beds. And also the reimbursement for the cataract minister. Minister Burke, you might answer that because you were quite critical of me taking him up there a couple of years ago in one of the paper articles. Have you, have you increased the reimbursement? reimbursement today for the people that he took the money out of there recently. I hope you've delivered him for the people of your constituency in Cork who are in a crisis situation and can't get a cataract operation in Cork or if you turn your back once again on them going forward because you did have enough going. Ishke Erden, you're talking about Ishke Erden and the funding, extra funding. Are they going to deliver? Are they going to deliver? Is that money going to go to the top notches at the top and nothing to the ground? Are, is Shannon Vale going to get its scheme this year coming? Is Dunmanway going to get its, its scheme this year coming? Is, Dun, is, is Ross Carberry, Warden Beach, where people are drinking raw sewage, going to get it? Is Goldeen 25 years waiting? Shannon Vale 29 years waiting? Are they going to get schemes or are they going to be kicked down the road like, every, like, like everything else? And pensions, we talk here, the Green Party claim that they look after everybody. Do they look after everybody? Where are the women's pensions in this country? Every Minister and every TD that's in government should be called out. How many women come into my constituency office every week in? Two, three, four. The pension is taken from them. They never got a pension because their husband got a pension. That's an outrageous attack on the ordinary, good, hard-working women in this country. Whether they worked at home or whether they worked outside, they have no pension, most of them. And that's an absolute and another and another disgrace that their pensions have been taken. And every minister should hang their heads in shame on that issue. Because the women of Ireland have asked me to say that.